Historically, ironstone gravels have been neglected, even rejected by growers, and subjected to limited scientific studies. But at the University of Western Australia, researchers using some of the world's most advanced micro-scanning technology are discovering new information on gravel composition, water absorption and nutrient dynamics aimed at unlocking potential and improving management of this challenging soil type. The project um, funded by GRDC has really aimed to combine these high spec imaging techniques with basic soil science analyses to see how we can marry them together to provide more information for growers in the future. Since initial research began a year ago, the team's been analysing around 400 gravel samples from Western Australia and South Australia, concluding that all gravel is not the same. There's some really big differences if you go, say, along the southern coastal regions compared to the uh, aluminium rich gravels you might find in bauxite mining areas. And across the wheat belt, there's a lot more iron rich gravels which have completely different properties again. This is a cutting edge, high tech process of discovery being applied at an unprecedented scale and level of detail. This uh, really hasn't been applied to an agricultural setting like this before, where we were able to look at um, uh, water movement into specific pieces of gravel. The research is revealing that while ironstone gravels broadly contain iron, these gravels may be dominated by either iron, silica and or aluminium, which all react differently, even allowing penetration with water and nutrients. So where we've advanced from last year is to uh, use special sample processing techniques where we're using a dye uh, to penetrate into the sample and uh, that shows us clearly uh, where uh, the water moves into the gravel. So as we slice through the gravel here, the orange regions represent uh, where water can penetrate into the gravel, whereas the yellow areas are um, pores that are not accessible to water. The application of technology and the results it's bringing are incomparable in gravel soil research. We have used scanning electron microscopy to see how the elements are structured within the gravels and then we've moved on to putting these gravels through the nanosims which is a really fine detail, high resolution technique so you can go pixel by pixel seeing where the nutrients have moved in through the gravels and where they're sort of getting caught up. Professor Murphy is one of the country's most experienced soil research scientists and he sees this technology as transformational. This is the most exciting piece of equipment I've ever worked on. It's allowing us to look at the chemistry inside the gravel. The new insights reveal that silica-dominated gravels are broadly more porous with more potential to interact with water. In addition to that, it can take in a lot of nutrients with it particularly nitrogen we found can be quite easily moved into the gravels by water ingress. Phosphorus seems to bind tightly to iron, often becoming stuck to the surface. People who've had those issues with phosphorus retention, not really seeing any improvement the more fertiliser they add, have generally had these iron dominated gravels as opposed to the silica or the aluminium. Nitrogen, however, is likely to move into gravel and bind through gaps or pathways, which suggests different mechanisms of nutrient binding. Yeah, so we can clearly see uh, the pathways uh, going into the gravel, so these cracks, um, which are, are great spaces for that uh, exchange of water and nutrients. The conclusion, the more phosphorus is likely to bind, the more iron-rich the gravels and the more nitrogen has potential to get trapped, the more porous the gravels, as with silica-dominated gravels. So the more silica within the gravels, the more quartz particles they contain, and therefore that's allowing those gaps to be formed to different pores, which is in turn allowing water entry into the gravels. I would agree. Ultimately, the team hopes that by unlocking the relationship between gravel soils and water and nutrient interactions, growers will be able to make informed decisions on testing, then renovating their soils in ways that target realistic yield potentials. In a broad sense, I think it's just really highlighted for everyone that it's important to consider them in your soil analyses because they're having a massive impact on what's going on in your soil. And also there seems to be quite a lot of variation, so how you treat these soils is going to be different depending on what gravel you have. <laughs>